First of all, it's a big pleasure to be here. I made a, one class in Brooklyn a few years ago. It was not in this area, it was in a different area of Brooklyn. So it's a new area, Baruch Hashem, there's a good energy here, good people. Today, we decided to speak about success, how to succeed in life, what the Torah, what the Kabbalah teach us, how to be successful anything we want. I think that's the, that's the goal of everyone. Usually when we speak about success, usually people right away speak, like they think about money, you know. But success is not just in money. Mazal, success, can be in anything. <clears throat> to be successful in work is one thing. But also to be successful in your learning, if it's a Torah learning or other types of learning, to be successful raising good children, to be successful in Shalom Bayit, to have a good, strong, peaceful house. Being successful is something that we all need, that we all want, and we all need to achieve. The Torah, the Kabbalah speaks about it. Unfortunately, uh, this information that I will tell you today, it's not information that you can learn in university, not in the college, and it's more of a spiritual information. It's information that we received long time ago, since the world was created. God gave the spiritual information, the anatomy of the world, to Adam and Chava, and they passed it to their children, and they passed it to their children, their children. And it got to Avraham Avinu, and Avraham Avinu passed it to Yitzchak, and Yitzchak <coughs> passed it to Yaakov. And in Egypt, and when we came out of Egypt, and then we received all the information together, whatever we had and more in Mount Sinai. And even, even if a person will live for 3,000 years, it's not enough time to learn and to know all that information that we have, Baruch Hashem. But today I want to share with you a few tips, advices from our sages, how to be successful in life. And also another question is, what's blocking us from being successful in life? Because sometimes there's things that are blocking us. We can sometimes feel it, that you do everything right. I know people that learn in university, for example. They have a good occupation. They have good skills, they are healthy, they are smart, but somehow things are, doesn't work for them. They can't achieve what they want. They start a business, that doesn't, the business doesn't go. They start a work, they don't find a place. Something doesn't go well. Something is blocking you. Also, a person wants to get married. He needs a success to get married. I know people, they look handsome, or beautiful for a lady. They are smart, they have good occupation, good family, they have money, and they still can't find their soulmate. Something is blocking. Something doesn't work. So today we're going to figure it out a little bit. What's the main block to our life? And what can we do to get more success? Bezrat Hashem, with God's help. סברי מרנן, ברוך אתה אדוני, אלוהינו מלך העולם, שהכל נהיה בדברו. אוקיי. אז בעזרת השם, a lot of people think that success is, has to do with, um, with skills. There's people that are skilled, they have skills, so they will be successful. They are smart, they will be successful. But people that are a little bit aware of what's happening, as we said before, there's a lot of people that are smart, that have the good degrees, that are very skilled, but whatever they touch doesn't work, doesn't go well. And it reminds me a very interesting story. Uh, they say it's a true story that happened not long ago with a person that he was poor, he didn't have money, and he was looking for a job, and there was no much jobs that he could do. Uh, so he decided, okay, maybe I'm going to 
put an offer to work uh, as a, you know, uh, cleaning offices. So there was uh, one company, a high-tech company, computers, that they were looking for uh, someone to clean the offices. So he gave an offer, I want to, I want to, I want to work for you. They invited him for an interview. They speak to him, the, the manager, and he tells him, okay, it seems like, you know, you're good. I mean, what, what do you need to be, uh, you know, to, to clean? <laughs> There's no much to know. Uh, it seems like it's fine. Uh, just give me your email address and uh, we will send you all the, you know, paperwork, all the information because it's computers or everything is by emails. So he says, I'm sorry, but I don't have an email. I also don't have a computer. So can you give me, uh, you know, like a sheet or something? So he looks at him and he says, like, you don't have an email? Listen, if you don't have an email, it means you're not professional. So you know what? I think this, this work is not for you. Like it's a, you know, because we speak in emails and, and everything, even the cleaner needs an email. So I'm sorry, this work, this job is not for you. So he went out. He was very disappointed. He had the last $10 in his pocket that he had. And he saw someone selling strawberries, one of the supermarkets, and it was very cheap. It was a sell. So then an idea came to his mind. Maybe he should get the strawberries. It was $10 like a kilo, two kilos of strawberries, sell. He says, maybe I'm going to buy this kilo of strawberries and I'll sell it because here it's very cheap. Maybe I'm going to sell it in another neighborhood. They will buy it. So he bought those strawberries. He went from door to door to ask people, you know, it's before the season. I have strawberries. You want to get some strawberries? And Baruch Hashem finished the day with $20. The next day, he went again to buy strawberries. But now a little bit more. And he sold it. And slowly, slowly, Baruch Hashem, he got another 20, another 40, another 100. So he could buy a bicycle. And now it's a lot easier. He could go and all over a few neighborhoods and sell more and more strawberries. And slowly, Baruch Hashem, he had mazal. You know what's mazal, right? He had good luck. Whatever he touched was good. Baruch Hashem, he could buy a small store in the neighborhood selling food. And this small store was doing very well. And after five years, this gentleman, he owned... He was the owner of one of the most popular uh, food uh, supermarkets in the area. He was rich. After five years, Baruch Hashem. And then, after he became, Baruch Hashem, the owner of a very, very big company, the next step was to do insurance. Because when you have a lot of money, when you have a lot of things... You need insurance, you know, something may happen. So he went to an insurance company. He speaks to the insurance company and tells them that he wants to insure his space and the food and everything. Maybe someone will steal it. So they say, no problem. They, they do all the, you know, documents and they say, okay, just give me your email address so I can send you all the, you know, the policy and everything. So he's like, I don't have an email address. So he looks at him like, you don't have an email address. You own one of the most popular supermarkets in the area. You are a rich person. You don't have an email address. Imagine what, what would you be if you had an email address? So he, saw, he told him, if I had an email address, I was a cleaner in a computer company. <laughs> yeah. This is an example of someone that doesn't have many skills or wisdom or diploma, but he has mazal. He has hatzlacha, success. God bless whatever he does. And this is what we need. You don't need more than that. 
So, Be'ezrat Hashem, how do we get that? I want to, today, I'm not going to go and speak to you about how to make money and how to be successful. Like, we all know there's different ways in the physical world. I want to go a little bit up. We know that the source of everything is spiritual. Everything, every blessing that comes to this world, the source of it, it's spiritual. I'll give you an example. Every action that we do in life, the action where it starts, in the mind. You first think, and then those ideas come to an action, and then there is success. Something is happening. But it's always start from the, from the mind. It starts from thinking. Now, thinking is a physical thing. Did you ever touch a thought? No, to think it's something spiritual. To imagine it's something spiritual. So the source of any physical success, it always starts with a thought. With something spiritual. The same systems apply to everything in the world. Anything that you see working in this world, existing in this world, it has a spiritual source in heaven that gives it energy and blessing and life. That's how things are alive in this world. There is something in Shammai. Our sages say that, for example, every nation has a certain malach, certain angel in heaven that this angel is connected to that nation and when there is a war between the angels there is a war between nations like Ukraine and Russia and Israel and Hamas right it's a spiritual war that when it comes down to this world it becomes a physical war for example the Ben Ishchai I came in there's a picture of the Ben Ishchai here very, very important rabbi. I think your, your, your father gave me a book. He, he made a... The rabbi's father, he made a translation in, in Russian. I was two, two months ago, I was in Moscow, and he gave me the book that he translated of the Ben Ishchai, a present to take to my community in Canada in Russian. Very, very good job. We use it. Baruch Hashem. We use it too. Use it too here? Kol So the Ben Ishchai said... Ben Ishchai passed away 125 years ago. He was the rabbi of Iraq. Baghdad. He was a big Kabbalist. And he wrote in his book, I saw it maybe a month ago. He wrote in his book on Ben Ishchai Drashot in Parashat Kitetze. He wrote there, there is a certain power of impurity in heaven. That this power of impurity, you know how it's called? Ish Hamas. Ish Hamas. That's the, that's the name. Yeah, a man of Hamas. And he says that this power of impurity is very, very strong. And it takes from Am Israel, from the, from the nation of Israel, in the spiritual world, it takes blessing. And wants to fight it because it came from the Nachash, from the, snake. from the snake. Snake symbolized the bad powers. And then the Ben Ishchai asked, and how can we overcome this klipa, this shell of Hamas? So he say, the only way is with Tehillim. Say, even Torah learning doesn't help. We usually think when you learn Torah... Wow, this is very strong, very powerful. It's like being in the army to learn Torah. But, he says, reading Tehillim can destroy Hamas. Nothing else. That's what the Ben Ishchai, now he says it as a prophecy 125 years ago. Insane. Oh Hashem. So when there's two angels that are fighting in heaven, the, the nations are fighting, everything is from above. So now today, I want to give you some advices. How can we Effect from this world, the upper worlds, spiritually, to bring power of mazal, of success. That's the goal. 
and to see what's blocking the blessing that God gives us. Because sometimes we get, well, sometimes, always we get a blessing. But something blocking the blessing. We will figure out what's blocking the blessing, Bezat Hashem. One of the things. And we will see that it's connected to all of us, especially here in Brooklyn or in the United States of America. So, first of all, I want to give you some advices. Let's start with the advices and then we'll see what's blocking. There's one very, very, very important thing that we have to know. Shabbat is a very spiritual day. That's the spiritual day. Motze Shabbat, right after Shabbat, that's the beginning of the week. According to Kabbalah, whatever you do on Motze Shabbat, it affects the whole week because everything goes by the beginning. If you started something good, it will be good. That's why, for example, people that are first year of marriage, it's the, it's the most important year because the way you're going to behave to each other, what you're going to do, how much time you're going to spend together, how you're going to talk to each other, what you're going to do in the first year will affect the whole life. First year is very important. That's why we have a mitzvah from the Torah in the first year. A husband has to come home earlier, every day. First year, I remember in yeshiva, we learned half a day. So it, uh, after we got married, the rabbi said, go home. I said, why? We, we have to learn. Everybody said, no, shana rishona, first year, go home, you have to be with your wife. More time, spending more time, because if you are... Spending more time together, strength your relationship in the first year, it will affect it for good for the rest of the life. The first year is very important. Also in business, first year of business is the most important year. You can ruin all your business in the first year. You can make your business in the first year. How you start things. Also first day, that's why when we come to a new house, what do we do? Right away, the first thing we do in a new house... Hanukkah Tabayit. Why? To start it with a right leg. With good energy. With, with holiness. This is will bless that house. So same thing on Motzei Shabbat. After Shabbat, it's the first hour, a few hours of the day, of the week. That's going to affect the whole week. That's why Motzei Shabbat is very important. If you want to be successful um, spiritually, you want to be successful in, in that week, Put all your attention on Motzei Shabbat. How you take Shabbat away. Those who come to synagogue. There is a prayer we say on Motzei Shabbat. We say at the end of the prayer, the Chazan or someone say, Baruchu et Hashem HaMevorach. And everybody answers, Baruch Hashem HaMevorach le'olam vay. That's a very, very important moment. Men, you have to remember that, and women, you remind your husbands. When you say, Baruch Hashem HaMevorach Le'olam Va'ed, and Motzei Shabbat, it's very important to be in synagogue at that moment, and say it long. Baruch Amonai HaMevorach Le'olam Va'ed. The Chida, Rabbi Chaim Yosef David Azulai say that, According to Kabbalah teaching, if you say it long, that's opening something in heaven and you will have success at that week. That's a secret. Small thing you do. At the end of Shabbat in Arvit, say it long, you'll have success that week. <clears throat> I'll give you another one in synagogue. You know when we raise the Sefer Torah, Right? We raise the Sefer Torah, we show it to everyone. That moment is a very important moment. To raise the Sefer Torah, by the way, this is a big zgula to get married. If you know someone wants to get married, buy for him the owner of holding the Sefer Torah. They say as he holds the Sefer Torah, he will hold his kalab, his wife. Huh? Amen. Hold the Sefer Torah. I, last year in my synagogue in Canada, on Rosh Hashanah, I was standing and telling everyone that buying the rays of Sefer Torah 
this is a zgula to get married. We had one of the members of our community. He is almost 60 years old. He's not married. For people in that age, it's very hard to get married. But he didn't lose his hope. After I said that, he bought all the agbaot, all the raises of the Sefer Torah. Ein mincha, ein 800, 1000, 2000, 5000, doesn't matter how much. He bought it. In my heart, I said, well, for sure, he needs to get married this year. <laughs> I was waiting. And February, he was calling me, Baruch Hashem, I'm inviting you to my wedding. He found a good girl. Girl. Yeah. Pretty young. Baruch Hashem. And they have beautiful life. And then I asked him, can I tell it in the next Rosh Hashanah so people, you know, be inspired. He said, yeah, of course, you can go spread it. It's a nest. Whatever our Chachamim say, if you do something... It's open something, the mazal of that particular thing. He got it. Raising the Sefer Torah is very important. Also, by the way, it helps with back pain. This is not me saying. This is Rabbi Chaim Palaji, the main rabbi of Turkey, 200 years ago, says that. Okay. So, but when we raise the Sefer Torah, I want to teach you something, guys. When we raise the Sefer Torah, you should look at the Sefer Torah. You should look at it. And you should find the letter of your name. The first letter of your name. You should find a word that starts with the first letter of your name. So for example, if your name is Yaakov, so you look at the uh, letter Yud. Find it there. If you couldn't find when they, you know, turn it, turn it so go close after that and just look. Tell him one second. Let me see. <laughs> or get the, the Agba. Then you can see easily, right? If you get it, if you buy it. Why? Because this is, uh, this is a zgula. If you do that, when you look at the first letter of your name on Shabbat, it's a zgula. It opens a certain energy that gives you success for the whole week. That's what it says in our books. That's why when you're careful in that, Bezat Hashem, you open your mazal in that area of success, you will see that this week is not going to be as a regular week because you, you was looking for that letter. That's your mazal. That's another thing. Before we continue with the advices, I want to put a little bit of attention on something that's blocking our luck. We have to understand that God, in many books, symbolized as sun. The sun always give light. The sun always give warmth. Doesn't matter who you are, by the way. The sun gives light to the good people, and the side, the sun gives light to the bad people. There's only one person that doesn't get light from the sun or warmth from the sun. You know who is that person? That person. That person that closed the window and covers himself, the sun from shining on him. The sun always shines. Same thing as God. Some people say, why God doesn't give me? My neighbor has a Lexus 2025. He has a house, Baruch Hashem, very, very new, nice. He has a good business, he has a good wife, and I don't... Why God give him and doesn't give me? Even if we don't say it out loud, some people have that question in their hearts. Sometimes we think, okay, God loves him more than me. He gives him more than me. Maybe he has more merit than me. So I want to tell you something and remember it for the rest of your life. Everybody for Hashem is the same. God gives everybody the same. He is like the sun. The sun doesn't give you more light than it gives him. It's the same light. 
The problem is that we block the sun. And it's happened to be that in that area for your neighbor, the sun is not blocked. It could be because of his merit. It could be because of his father or grandfather merit. But the sun is not blocking. You're not, he's not blocking the sun in a certain area. Or it could be that he gets also other type of sun, which is from the bad powers. But this is what we'll speak after that. Some people, they get energy, they get blessing, and they are very bad people. So how come? They are blocking. They are blocking from the holy side, but they get it from the sitra acha, the bad side. That's, that's also an issue that we're going to speak today. But we have to remember that rule. God loves us all. Rabbi Levi Yitzhak from Bardichev once said a very, very powerful sentence. I want to share it with you. Remember that sentence. For me, it gives me inspiration, this sentence. Rabbi Levi Yitzhak from Bardichev says that, he says, I wish, I wish I will love the biggest righteous person like God loves, love, the biggest sinner. I wish I would love the, the, the most, the, the biggest righteous person, the biggest tzaddik, like God loves the biggest sinner. The love of Hashem to the biggest sinner is more than our love to rabbis, to big people, to our parents. Even the people that we call sinners, God loves them. He gives everybody. We block it. So what's blocking it? I want to speak about one issue that I know that most of you are not there. You don't have that block. But some of us, we had that block when we were young. Or our kids are experiencing this block right now. Or our community or neighbors experiencing that block right now. So it's very important to know about it. It says in the holy books that there's a big difference between Jews and non-Jews. Now, it's a very sensitive topic because today in this very modern world that people speak about racism, you know, sometimes it's very, very hard for us to say, okay, we are the chosen nation, right? Now, it says in the Torah a hundred times that the Jews are the chosen nation. But in a, in a certain way, we feel, okay, but it's, it's not comfortable to say that. Like, okay, there's non-Jews and they're also like good people and successful people and everything. And they also have their tikkun and they have their fixing in this world. So I want to get into this area a little bit to understand it from the Kabbalah side. Okay? We have to understand that God created this world for a certain mission. And the mission was given to the whole world. We are all came from one human being, Adam and Chava, which was, were one in the beginning. All the ladies came from the soul of Chava. Her soul was broken to billions of pieces, and each one of you is a one piece of that. And also the non-Jews. And Adam also, his soul was broken to a lot of pieces after the sin, and if each one of us carry a certain piece. It's called Nitzotz Gdusha. Um, Nitzotz is um, a spark. It's, it's called a holy spark. We're a certain spark from the soul of Adam and Chava. All of us. And each one of us is like a puzzle. Each one of us makes his fixing and when everybody does it all together, the puzzle is complete and we finish the mission. And each one took a different thing. And he has a different package. That's why... One person is born with certain issues that he has to overcome, like anger and uh, being uh, like uh, egotistic. And someone else doesn't have anger, doesn't, he's not egotistic, but he has a problem of, I don't know, jealousy. And he has a problem of other things, of addictions. Each one comes with his package because this is what you need to fix in Adam or Chava. What is the difference between Jews and non-Jews? So the difference is that there is certain big parts of the soul of Adam and there are certain, certain small parts of the soul of Adam. The big parts carry a big mission. 
they carry a lot of responsibility. If they make a mistake, it's a big deal. And they ruin more. But they also get more reward. So I gave that example in your house. Right now we were there. For something else, it's like, you know, you have a factory. And there's a lot of workers. And there's the managers. The workers, they don't have a headache. They come, they punch the card, they do whatever they need to do, they go home. They do a little bit. They don't affect much the factory. We can change the workers. They are not doing so much. Without one, if the one worker is not going to come or is not going to do his job, fine. The factory still can work. But if one of the manager will disappear, that's a big deal. The factory can like lose everything because he carries a lot of responsibility. He's the head. This world, God divided it in His wisdom that there is managers and there's workers. And that's what means a chosen nation. Chosen nation means not that you are better than others. It just you carry more responsibility. By the way, if you do a mistake, you ruin the factory more than if he's doing a mistake. If an Anju will make a mistake, it's not a big deal. It's okay. We can live with that. It's fine. If a Jew makes a mistake, why, why, why? Now we have to fix a lot. It's a big hole. From the other side, if a Jew makes his work, the factory will succeed. He will get a lot of salary. A lot of money. But if he doesn't do his job, like we said, so you get a lot of reward, but also you get a lot of responsibility. That's technically the difference between Jews and non-Jews. Now, the problem is that, you know, a doctor, when he goes to learn to be a doctor, he needs to learn like eight years. How many years it's in America? Ten, Ten years? Why so many years? Because, you know, you have to know all the anatomy of the body, how things work, how's the system inside, how's the system outside. We would not go to a doctor that doesn't know nothing, just give advices, right? We, he has to know the anatomy of the, of the body. <coughs> Same thing, there's the anatomy of the soul, of the spiritual world that, that God created. This is learned in Torah, in Kabbalah, in Hasidut. The anatomy of the spiritual world and the soul. And it says there that a lot of time, there is certain connections that those connections create a, a, a big destruction. When the, for example, like, you know how they make an, an atom bomb? A nuclear bomb, sorry. A nuclear bomb. Do you know what's, what's the, it's Albert Einstein. He came up with this idea. They learned from him how to make an, a nuclear bomb. Nuclear bomb basically is, is mixing things that contradicting each other very much together so they just explode in a way that it just destroys a whole city or a whole country. When two things that don't need to be together are together, it can be a nuclear bomb. This is, I'm talking about physical world. You know, I once, if you try to take a minus and a minus and connect them together, they're going to, or a plus and a plus, they, they not, it's not working together. Not comparable. Exactly. That's why the Torah comes and says, the biggest power in this world is called relationships. Zivugim. Zivugim means Connection. connections. That's the biggest part. By the way, also in business, you want to be successful in business, you have to have good connections. Alone, you cannot be a good businessman. You need connections. The more you're connected, the more you will... Be successful. Also a family. What's a strong family that they have? Connection. What's a good couple that they have a good connection? If you don't have a connection, you don't have anything. Connection is the most important thing in life. Now, the connection has to be a good connection. When it's a good connection, it's the best. When it's the not right connection, it could be a nuclear bomb. And here, the Torah comes and say different things that I don't know why, but the world today became a little bit crooked and they don't understand it 
like they used to understand. For example, we know that a right connection is between a man and a woman. That's what God created. That's, that, that was happened from the beginning of the world. And that's what happened through the whole history. That's what actually brings fruits, right? A man and a woman, they bring a child. I never saw a man and a man bringing a child, right? Unless they cheat and they get a woman from the side, and you know. But, <laughs> but it doesn't work. A women and a woman, they cannot have a child, right? Now, yeah, there is such a thing that God created people that they have a certain um, feelings towards the same gender. And I understand that. And it's normal thing that God created. It's as uh, God created also any other things that we need to work on them. God created people that are get ang getting angry, right? We have to work on our anger, right? We have to work on our jealousy, right? We have to work on our sadness. We have to work on a lot of things. When things going against nature, get, getting angry, it's against nature. We all understand that this is not right. It's ruining. Being sad is also against, being depressed is also against nature. That's not a good thing. So we need to work on that. Same thing, there are certain relationships that are against nature. That's what God created. Now, the problem is that God says the biggest power in life is connection. And when the connections are made not the right way, Explosion, block, problem. There's another section in the Torah that talks about intermarriage. A connection between the managers and the workers. The connection between Jews and non-Jews. Now, there's no problem with people that are not Jewish. They are very nice, they are very good. We can work together with them. We, we, we have friends like that. However, when it comes to the connection, soul connection, by the way, soul connection happens only when you get married. Soul connection. When you're getting together. When it comes to soul connection, if the soul connection is not right, you don't connect with the right thing that you need to connect, it's cause a block. It's cause a problem. It's cause a shell. And then you block yourself from the sun. Now, it could be that a person did it when he was very young. He didn't know that this is not right. Now, what's happening with that? I have to explain you first a little bit. We need to learn a little bit of Kabbalah to understand. The souls in this world... Each one, his soul comes from a different world. In general, in ba there is four worlds, four spiritual worlds. The highest world called Atsilut. This is, I'm already teaching you the, the anatomy of the world. Okay, that's what's written in Kabbalah, thousands of years of years. The first world, the most spiritual world called Atsilut. The second world called Bria. Atzilut, that world, is a world of all good. There's no bad in that world. The world of Bria, it's the second world. This world is, most of it is good. The minority is bad. The third world, called Yetzirah, that's the world where uh, Adam was before the sin, by the way. That's the world where all the angels are, Yetzirah. This world is half-half. Half good, half bad. And the last world, which is the physical world, where we are now. What we're feeling. This is called Asiya. And this world is mostly bad, minority of good, as we can see. Right? Now, those worlds, each one of us, our soul came from a different place. Souls of the Jews came from the world of Bria, the second world, where is mostly good and minority of bad. The souls of non-Jews, yeah, and that's their fixing, and that's normal, just that's the source of their soul, came from the lowest level 
of the ulama asiya, of the physical world. So they were, dear souls came from the spiritual world of asiya, of the physical world, which is very, very down. Now, what's happening when there is intermarriage? You're mixing the worlds. For example, if a man, a Jew, married or having intimacy with a non-Jew, a woman, what's happening that he is taking the souls, the potential souls, his kids, because in every seed there is kids, there's souls. He brings them down to a world that it's not their world. And he is taking energy from the upper worlds and he brings them down to the bad worlds. Now, it's not that the goyim are bad, but the, the source of klipa, the source of the bad powers, in is in that same place. So they take it. It's very hard to explain things that are very Kabbalistic, but I think you get me. So I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example. It's like, for example, yeah? Again, this is just a physical example to understand what's happening. A man see a very nice uh, woman, a man in Israel, a Jew, see a very nice Arab lady from Gaza. Okay? And he falls in love. Oh, her hijab is so nice, you know. <laughs> I, want to, uh, I want to be with her, okay? Everybody is over 18 here, right? <laughs> so, he wants to get married to her. Now, she is a good person. She is nice. She is le- she she can be the best person in the world, and she really you know respect him and everything good. So he starts to be with her, and he gives her money. He gives her money, and he gives her money, and he gives her money. But her father, her father, is uh, one of the Hamas people, and all the money that you give her, what does he do with that? He takes it, and he buys, and he buys weapons. That with those weapons, what they do? They kill the they, they kill the family of her. You understand? So this is physically. We all understand that this is oh oy vavoy. It's not good. Even though she is a good person, she's wonderful. She doesn't even she she doesn't want this money to go to the Hamas. But that's in fact what's happening. So when a man from Olama Bria that has a lot of shefa, blessing energy of Olama Bria, a very high world. He got that responsibility because he was born a Jew. Goes and gives it to the klipa, to the shell, means to the Olama Asiya, to the very low world. Now she gets it. What's happening? Because she is located in a place where there is Hamas, they take it. They take the holy souls of you that you put there. Now, those holy souls, by the way, they carry your parnasa. They carry your um, livelihood. livelihood. All the chef, a blessing that you have, it's there. So you give it to them. And by the way, that's how the bad powers in the world get power. Become bigger. Okay? That's when a man is with a woman that is not fit him. You know, it's like you're trying to charge an iPhone with an Android uh, plug. plug. It doesn't work. It's going to ruin the iPhone. Okay? Like that, that's how people understand today. Like, you know, when you give those... Uh... <laughs> so, now, the opposite side... What is the opposite side? Is when a Jewish lady, which is from Olam Abriya, a very high world... She is um, connecting with someone that is from the Asiya, from the lower world of Asiya. So now it's not going, bringing down, it's taking the Klipa, yeah, and bring her up. And then up there, it messes all everything. So in our Mashal, it's like bringing uh, Hamas. To Israel and let them live there. Now again, don't get me wrong. I'm not talking about the non-Jews themselves. I'm talking about the the spiritual power that controls the source of their soul. 
They can be the most pr good people in the world. The problem is that we're mixing worlds here, that it's making a nuclear bomb. And it's a very sensitive topic. Usually I don't speak about it, especially not in public. But we have to know this is Kabbalah. This is, this is not me saying this is Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, the information that he got from Eliyahu Navi. Now, why do I tell you that? Because it's enough that one time in your life it happened to you. Yeah, let's speak open. A person was not religious or it was religious, you know. And unfortunately, some people even do it after they get married. Not you, but there are people that do it after they get married. They cheat and they go with non-Jews. What if somebody becomes a Giyoret? That's something else because she came back. She, what's Giyoret? What's converting? Converting, she got a neshama. She's a different person now. She got a soul from Olam Abriah. So she's there. No problem. But until you got that soul, you're not there. So, what's happening is that if a person did it once in his life, if we don't fix it, this is, can cause a block for the rest of your life. Because you were ruining the system. the system. And the system doesn't work good for you. Because it's ruined right now. It's, 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 it's needed a fix. So what is the fix? The fix is pretty simple. First of all, tshuva. You know what's tshuva? Tshuva means regret and accept on yourself to not do that anymore. The second step is called already fixing inside. Yeah, like in, uh, you know, how do you say installato? The one that does, doesn't, a uh, plumber, yeah. A plumber, now he needs to like fix it inside, clean all the pipes. How do you clean all the pipes? You have to dig in. So this is already accepting on yourself a certain, uh, a certain fixing, for example. One day of fast usually, from the morning to the, to the evening, for that thing, for that not good connection that you had. Doesn't matter when it happened. Accepting on yourself a fast, one day, if you can, and that, that one day, read the whole Tehillim. And then to give a certain amount of money to donation, usually it's 216. Because that's the number of fixing... Because technically, to fix it, Arizal says you have to fast 216 days. Now, nobody can do that in our generation. Back then, people used to do that. You do it every day? Or? Yeah. To really, really fix it from the source, you need to do 216 fasts. Huh? Every day, from the morning to the night. Like, like, like Ramadan, like they do 40 days. No water, no, uh, no food. Again, you eat at night. But from the morning to the... This is what we should have do to fix it clean, 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 clean. The problem that in our generation, we don't have that power. What we do is we take, let's say, one dollar for every day. And we are podim. We are exchanging it with the fast. So 200 days, 216 days, 216 dollars. We give it to poor people, to, to yeshiva, yeah. to something like that. And we do that. This is fixing it from the source. Then, boom, the block goes away. Goes away clear, clean. Of course, if the person doesn't, you know, like, doesn't do that anymore, right? So, this is one way, and this is one reason of a big block that happened to people, the Jews, in their life. And they, sometimes you don't understand why is that. It's because something like that happened... And it was not fixed. So that's one thing. Let's, let's go back. By the way, if we already spoke about it, this is also the secret of Shabbat. People don't understand what's so important about Shabbat. That we need to keep Shabbat. Okay, so if I didn't keep Shabbat, what's happening? What did they do? You know, there's some, there's some laws in Shabbat that are funny. You know, I'll give you an example. Do you know that, let's say, I don't know, you make a salad. Okay? And... A bone fell into the salad, like a chicken bone. Fell. 
So you say, okay, I want to take the bone out of the salad. Mm -hmm. So I want to eat the salad. If you take the bone like this from the salad, you just made a, a borer, which is one of the, you broke Shabbat. Just a bone. Like, okay, I just took it from the salad. So how, how are I supposed to eat? I don't want the bone in the salad. Okay, so there's a different way. If you take the salad and you eat and you leave the bone, it's fine. Or if you take the bone together with a little bit of salad, it's fine. But if you just took the bone from the salad, the not good from the good, this is called borel. This is called you broke Shabbat. Very weird, right? A person turns light. People think, okay, Shabbat, you're not allowed to work. Back in the days, it was very hard to make fire. That was a work. That's why it was not allowed. Today, you make a fire in two seconds. Clack, fire. It's not a work. So why, if you turn on fire, it's called breaking Shabbat? So, of course, I cannot explain it like in few few seconds, but just to understand the idea, what is Shabbat? You remember the worlds, right? We are now in Olam Asiyah, in the physical world. You know what's happening to all the Jews in Shabbat? Your soul jumping to the highest world, Atzilut. There's one time, one day, every week, that we have the privilege, spiritually, to live in a different world. Now, most people don't feel it. Why? Because we are covered with so many shells. Yeah, we don't get the light. We don't feel that we just jump to a very, very high world. People that are observant in Torah, and the more you are learning and practicing, you feel the Shabbat. You feel you're in a different world. It's not the same world. You are in a different dimension. It's called. Mm -hmm. It's you here in a different dimension. Not everybody feels that dimension because they, are, they don't have the vessel to feel it because they don't keep it. Or they don't keep it right. But you are in a different dimension. Now when you are going to Olama Atzilut, the world of all good, and in that world you do certain actions that are not fit to that world, you're basically ruining that world. Do you understand? It's like um, going to a palace of a king and behave there like you behave in the washroom. In the, in the restroom. Here you don't say washroom. In Canada, restroom is washroom. Yeah. <laughs> so that's a, this is one of the differences between America and Canada. So, same thing, doing certain 39 works that we're not allowed to do on Shabbat, it's just bringing something that is very, very low to the upper worlds, and this is ruining the upper worlds. This is a big deal. Fire, it's not something that has to be there. If you turn fire while you are there, you're ruining that world. That's the problem of Shabbat. It's a spiritual thing. Shabbat, it's not a day of rest, because on Shabbat, by the way, I was, when we just came to Canada, we lived in the 15 or 16th floor. And every Shabbat, I was going three times to synagogue, and I was going up 16, 15 floors, and going down 15 floors. There's more work than that. And when we, we had a baby, so with the stroller and the baby, you go 15. So imagine, this is a work. Is that allowed on Shabbat? Yes. yes. So Shabbat has nothing to do with working hard. You can be a mother, a good mother, that she has 40 guests on Shabbat. And she needs to run to the kitchen and bring and do and that and the dishes. And she is working. She is sweating on Shabbat. One lady asked me, she says, I thought we were supposed to rest. To rest. <laughs> What's happening here? <laughs> You know, like, like my husband rests, but I don't know, I, I didn't. No, that's not good. He has to help her. But anyway, let's say they both do it. They both working on Shabbat. So that's allowed on Shabbat? Yes, because Shabbat has nothing to do with the physical rest. And people don't understand that. Shabbat has to do with the spiritual worlds. You have to learn the anatomy of the world to see what's happening on Shabbat and what I'm ruining and what I'm doing. 
So that's also the secret of Shabbat. Why can't you not play basketball or other sports? If you're Ashkenazi, you can. You're sweating. <laughs> you're sweating too, no? Hmm? If you said that you could I do told it. you, if you're Ashkenazi, you can go play basketball. Why? Huh? Because the Ashkenazim, they have a special... Uh, yeah. No. There is, there is an argument uh, about if we're allowed to play a ball on Shabbat or not. Not because it's breaking Shabbat. The argument is about if this is the vibe of Shabbat or not. Shabbat has a certain style. What needs to be in Shabbat, what we have to focus on Shabbat. If we're going to make all Shabbat a, a, a basketball... We, we, we miss the meaning of Shabbat. You know, I know people that for them Shabbat, okay, they woke up in the morning, they prayed very fast, ate a good food, went to sleep for two hours, played basketball and Shabbat gone. So what is Shabbat here? You understand? So the Sfaradim, the Shulchan Aruch, it's 500 years ago, he said, listen, this is ruining the Shabbat. So it's not, it's not that you do something wrong according to Torah. Torah allowed it, but it's not right to do. So, Shulchan Aruch and the Sephardi community is accepting on themselves that this is not right to do, so they don't do it. If the kids, until 13 years old, we say, fine, go play. But if you're already an adult, you have other more important things to do on Shabbat. However, in the Ashkenazi community, they said there's nothing bad about it. We're not going to, you know, we're going to play a little bit. We're not going to, you know, Make the whole Shabbat uh, play. And they are more lenient than that. There's certain places where we are more uh, lenient than them, right? So there's different, it's, it's, this is already minhagim, already uh, like customs, right? Yeah, but uh, that's according to your question. That is for your question, yeah. Ken Sadiq. Say in English because I think people don't yeah. understand Hebrew here. So people do lots of, uh, you know, what we had back then, black magic, cards, and they do like a halal, alas, what do you call that in, in uh, yeah. English language? For sure. Or it is to open your mazal, to go to Balin, is that forbidden or is it accepted? Yeah, I know I came to a Gorski community, right? <laughs> And the most popular, most popular uh, topic in the ghostly community, I learned already, this is black magic. Uh, I just came from Moscow not long ago, I know. Anyway, uh, I'll tell you. All this uh, black magic things, this is what I, sp I spoke before. This is a power that is exists in the world. And that power comes from the bad powers means you take energy from the bad powers that's why you better don't deal with that because usually every person that deal with that he suffers himself yes you can do bad things to people you can control even people there's certain things that you can do you can even kill people with black magic i have things that i i mean i even know how to do that you can mamash do bad things but this is because you are dealing with the bad side of the world which god created to have balance, and you're using it for bad, you know, and that's not good. We have to use our sources that it's the good sources, that the energy and the blessing come from the good places, which are not dangerous also. Most people that deal with that side, they become sick, they die early, their kids are suffering, you can see it. So, what if you go to Mekubah? Okay, yeah, you can go to a Mekubal, you can go to someone that understands Torah and get an advice. That's why each one has to have a rabbi, has to have someone that he gets an advice from, from the holy side. But let's go back to our, our sources, okay? So, we understood what can block us. And there's other things, but this is one of the main things. That if we realize that we're doing things that are not working. It could be because you have that block of not right relationships that happened or happening. That's blocking. Make sure to clean it. Make sure to fix it. As we said, if you don't know exactly how to do that, or the information that I gave you is not enough, go ask someone. But this is something we need to do. Because by the way, if you didn't fix it, you will come again to this world. Because those things 
that has to do with relationships that we didn't fix, that's the most important because the sin of Adam and Chava, you know what was the sin? People think, oh, they ate, they ate an apple. First of all, it was not an apple. And second of all, it was not eating even. Chet et Sadat was, was, was relationship. That was the sin. That they did it not in the right way, not in the right time, and not with the right intention. And that's why everything is connected to that. There was a wrong connection between Adam and Chava. And now it's caused also all the world that came from Adam and Chava. We have the desire to wrong connections. We have the tests of wrong connections. Each one in different area. And we have to make sure that we don't do those wrong connections. And if we did or are doing, to fix it right away before we go to the, up, to, the, to the next world. Because if you go to the next world without fixing those wrong connections, you will come here again. And not always as a human being, by the way. But this is a different uh, topic. Huh? Again, usually if you do or you did, you know. Okay? Now, after we understand that, we can continue and now know how to open more blessing, more success. So we said, we said one thing, Motzei Shabbat, you remember? Motzei Shabbat, very important. By the way, that's why on Motzei Shabbat also, what we do right after Havdalah? Huh? You know what's Havdalah, right? By the way, even someone that doesn't keep Shabbat, you don't keep Shabbat, still do Havdalah. Take your wine after Shabbat and make the blessing of Avdala. You know why? Because Avdala sweetening judgments. There's a lot of judgments on Motzei Shabbat. Deen. Bad powers are, are, are more because what's happened on Shabbat, all the bad powers are basically blocked in a certain way. They're not allowed to affect on Shabbat too much. After Shabbat, boom. That's why most people feel very, very tired, very uh, not pleasant, something negative feeling on Motzei Shabbat. Because there's a lot of negativity on Motzei Shabbat. Now we have to fix it and sweeten the judgments. How do we do that? Avdalah. Avdalah sweetening the judgment. Right after Avdalah, we have a custom to laugh. I don't know if you heard it, but in some synagogue, in my synagogue, Ha 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 ha, everybody's laughing. What happened? They are laughing because we want to start the, the week with happiness. If you started with happiness, the whole week will be happy. This is Motzei Shabbat. Now, for the businessmen that wants to be successful in business, I already said it in the short video that I sent. Did you hear the short video? Invitation to this fuel, to this class. I made a short video and then we said a very, very interesting zgula for businessmen or businesswomen that want to be successful. Not just for people that do business, it's also for people that want to be successful in anything else like writing a test or passing a test or uh, having a certain meeting, a job interview, anything you want to be successful in. And the same day, wake up early in the morning before the dawn. Sunrise. No, sunrise. You know, when it says sunrise, it's nets. It's 72 minutes before that. The dawn, alota shachar, yeah. The dawn is the time when the first light coming to the, to the area. Yeah, you can check it in the, in the time, yeah. There's a Jewish times, you know, you can check what's the dawn every day. Wake up before that time. Now I think it's like around maybe here, six. In the summer it's earlier, it's like five, four sometimes, four, thirty. Wake up 15 minutes before that, 20 minutes before that. Do the morning blessings, of course. And then fast to the east. Whenever you are, fast to the east when usually the sun rises in the east. And then recite three times in a row, chapter 4 in Tehillim. I assume everybody has Tehillim at home, and those who doesn't have, you have it in the, in the phone today. Yeah. Tehillim 4. How many times? Three times. 
So again, let's say you have a very important business meeting. You want to close a deal. Or you're going today to a date. Bezat Hashem, you want the date to be successful. Or you go to a job interview. Or you want to pass the test. I don't know, you have a driving test. At that day in the morning, again, I'm saying it again. At that day in the morning, you wake up in the dawn, very early. Because the earliest you wake up, more blessing you get in general. People that wake up very late, their day is not as successful as people that wake up early. You can feel it, you can see it. Wake up early. And at that time, face to the east, say three times, chapter four. Then go to work, go do, do whatever you want, you're going to be successful. That's a segula, that's a spiritual way to bring success, to bring blessing. Another way. In general, you have to, to know that the environment that we are in affecting us very much. I gave that example in your house now because the sister, no, the daughter of your brother, she showed me, she showed that she was talking about the parasha of this week. So she showed us, uh, uh, she had a drawing of, of Moshe with the, with the stuff that he threw it to the floor and it became a snake. So the rabbi from Lublin, he gives a very interesting interpretation on that. He says, you know, this stuff was not a regular stuff. This stuff was, was full of names of God. There was 42 names of God written on that. This stuff was the stuff of Adam. To pass it to to Shem to uh, to his son uh, uh, Shet. That passed it to Enosh. That pass it to Noah, to Shem, to Abraham, Abraham to Yitzchak, Yitzchak to Yaakov. Yaakov gave it to Yosef. Yosef, when he died, Paro took it. He put it in his treasures. Then Itro was one of the advisors of Paro. Paro told him, "Okay, you are going to pension. Go take whatever you want from my treasures." He took one of the things, the staff. He brought it home. He put it in his backyard, in the ground. So no, yeah, nobody could take it out. It was stuck there. Only Moshe, when he came, he took the stuff easily. He says, wow, you're going to be marrying my daughter. You're a special man. He married his daughter. He took the stuff. So this stuff was a very holy stuff with the names of God. Now, when God tells him, when you come to Paro and you're going to throw it on the floor, it's going to become a snake. But when you're going to take it back to you, it's going to become stuff again. So Rabbi from Lublin says, you know what we learned from that? Even a very holy thing like that stuff, full of the names of God, when you put it in the environment of the house of Paro, what it becomes? Snake. Like a snake like that. <laughs> but when you give it to Moshe, what it becomes? Holy stuff. He says the same thing as us. Doesn't matter how holy you are, how religious you are. Okay? When you're going to be in an environment, that the environment is a paro environment, you will be a snake. You will be affected by them. Same thing as in business and any success. You want to be successful? Go be close to successful people. If your area, the people around you, that you deal with, that you're friend with, are people that are not successful, because they have blocks, as we said before, it's uh, contagious. Okay? <laughs> you want to be successful? Go be around those people that are successful and they don't have those blocks. Even if it's going? Huh? Even if going? Technically, yes. But again, it's always good to be around your people, right? Yeah. Well, there are, what about the people who are not on the derech, but they're still seeing Shafa, like they're not showing sure Shafa? Business, b b from the business side of it, it will, you will be fine. Business. But not always, you know, business is not everything in life, right? You're going to be a friend with people that are big businessmen. 
but they get their money from the other side, right? Because how come these people that are, sorry, yeah, that are doing very bad things, cheating on their wives, going with non-Jews, okay, doing those all wrong relationships, and they're billionaires, okay? So where do they get the blessing from? Sitrach, from the other side, okay? So now what's usually happening to those people, you know? At the end, Sitracha cannot give you forever. Cannot give you forever. And one day it will stop. All, all that money cannot be blessed. I, I had a friend like that, unfortunately. He is a billionaire. He has like three, four billion dollars in his bank account. So he has a lot of money. So everybody thinks, oh, he's uh, very uh, successful and he's very good. And I told him a lot of times, you're doing mistakes, especially with relationships. And then what happened? One day his wife said, hello. They were fighting for years, of course. Because again, if you ruin your relationships in other places, you will have problems in your relationship. And he had a lot of... He would come with all the money home and will feel, will feel bad. He will eat his lunch, he will eat his dinner, but his heart, is, he doesn't really have enjoyment from that. He's not really happy. He has it, but he's not, he has small times of happiness that's not really happiness. He says it himself. And in the end, she wanted to divorce. She took half of his money. Right? And he is miserable. So, and by the way, it's happening. Go look at the, even the Nanjus that are very rich. All of them at the end, they divorce. The wives take half of their money. Right? I don't want to say the names, but uh, I think people know. Say, 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 say the companies. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Amazon, they had a blessing because it's Birkat Amazon. <laughs> so they say if you do Birkat Amazon, you're not going to have problems with money. So he got that blessing because of the name, I guess. Now I want to give you another advice. Very easy for everybody to do. You know Eliyahu Wanavi? One of the most righteous prophets we had. Now Eliyahu Wanavi is a person that didn't die, technically. <laughs> He came up into heaven as he is. Doesn't have a grave. In Haifa you have the place if you want to go. It's very, very, very uh, holy place. That's the cave of Eliyahu. This is Pinchas, no? Eliyahu is the soul of Pinchas. It's the same soul. But Eliyahu Navi is Eliyahu Navi. Now Eliyahu Navi, there's something about Eliyahu Navi on Motzei Shabbat. After Shabbat, they say if you want to be successful that week, say Eliyahu Navi 130 times. People do it. It's not, it's not very hard. Eliyahu Navi, Eliyahu Navi, Eliyahu Navi, Eliyahu Navi, Eliyahu Navi. It's going to take you maybe three minutes, okay? Start the week like that. They say you will be very blessed to say Eliyahu Navi 130 times on Motzei Shabbat. Or before or after Avdala. But no, no, I want to tell you something else. Before you go somewhere in the morning, you woke up in the morning, everything is good, you want to be successful that day? So we said the Tehilim, but there's another way, a little bit even easier. Before you go out, it's good to kiss the mezuzah, take a big breath, and then say, Eliyahu Navi, Eliyahu Navi, Eliyahu Navi, as much as times you can with one breath. Okay? You can say it 10 times, 20 times, it depends on your uh, lungs, yeah? But say, in one breath, as much as times you can, Eliyahu Navi. And it says in the holy books that this is bringing blessing of that prophet to make you successful at that day. Very easy to do, very powerful and working. Yes. Huh? On the way out of the house, you go to business, you go to do things. In the morning. 
No, no, no. This is I just said because I remember to say when I put the mayanand on the mezuzah. But you can do it at home. You can do it when you're sitting. You get, in the morning before you go to your things. After tefillah or whatever, say that. That's very good. Another thing. Uh, and that's, I think, the last thing we're going to say today because maybe people have questions. And Bezat Hashem, we also will do Kaddish Blinedo. That's a big secret, by the way. You know, sometimes you go out, you go out somewhere, you look at the floor, and you find uh, money. It's happened to you? Yeah. Two days ago. Two days ago? <laughs> okay. So you're very happy, yeah? You know, oh, I found a dollar, I found something. I found a coin. It says in the holy books, this money that you found, don't use it. Put it in your, uh, put it in your wallet. Keep it in your wallet. And this is, brings good luck. Now, there's a lot of superstitious uh, like ideas and things that people make up. This is actually has a Kabbalistic source. That's a real thing. Why? Because if you found something on the floor, it means that you have a certain luck. Oh, you got to, like, from heaven, they gave you something. Like, for free. It means your luck is there. Your good luck is there. Keep it. Don't buy something with it. Keep it on your wallet. Without Hashem, you will have successful. Huh? Even give it to your wife, make it happen. <laughs> And I'm talking about money. Now, money, you keep, as Allah will be, give you blessing. Amen. So the point is that there's a lot of ways we can be successful from a spiritual aspect. Maybe I'll give you another one. I do it all the time. This is, takes a little bit of time, but this is working. If you know that you have a very important week, that in this week, I don't know, you need to fly somewhere, to go somewhere, to be successful in something, on Motzeh Shabbat, say... Uh, start to read right away after Avdalah read uh, parasha of Vaishlach Vaishlach parasha in the Torah start it from the beginning Vaishlach Yaakov Malachim Lefana Belesav Achiv Atzazim Dedom up until the fifth Aliyah the beginning of the fifth Aliyah read everything it's going to take maybe five ten minutes depends on your reading but if you read that on Motzeh Shabbat the whole week you will see, like, help from heaven. This is not me saying, this is Rabbi Eliyahu Akoen from Izmir, from Turkey. He says, this is very, very strong. If you didn't say it on Motzeh Shabbat, you can say it also, let's say today, you need, you need luck in something, say it in the morning. Vaishlach, up until the fifth Aliyah, read it, just in Hebrew like that, just read it. This is gives success. This is how our sages, our great-grandfathers, our rabbis, that's how they succeeded in life. That's how they made parnasa and money. That's how they made a good name around the other nations. And Baruch Hashem, they had everything in life. They didn't use necessarily physical ways to bring success. They used the spiritual way of bringing success. And this is the secret of the Jewish nation. Bezat Hashem, God willing, Kadosh Baruch Hu will open the mazal of all of us. Amen. And Bezat Hashem will be all successful Amen. in everything we do. And Bezat Hashem, all your wishes, whatever you wish to yourself or to your kids right now, today, Kadosh Baruch Hu will fulfill your wishes for good. Amen. And the last thing, Bezat Hashem, will do it after we will answer your questions if you have. We will make a Kaddish. And this Kaddish is a very important Kaddish because after a lecture like this, when we say Kaddish, it says if you all answer Amen Yehe Shemeh Rabbah properly, all your sins are cleaned from today. So Bezad Hashem, we're going to do it all together, and you're going to come come out like in, after Yom Kippur, Bezad Hashem. <laughs> Just make sure you don't get uh, the sins back. <laughs> Questions, Bevakasha? Question. Yes. What, what about uh, any sugulot on the chapter of Right. The, there, is, there, is, uh, there is something called the Parashat Haman, the chapter of Man. Man is the food that was given to the Jewish nation in the desert. We will read that parasha next week. Okay? Next week, we're reading the parasha of the man, the food that Am Yisrael ate in the desert. There's a big segula for a person that reads that portion in the Torah. It's in Parashat Beshalach. 
It's called Parashat Haman. It's also Yevet in Russia and English. Everybody knows about this Segula. person that reads that every day, he has a blessing in his Parnasa and income. However, there's a big, bigger Segula to read it in the, the Tuesday of the week when we read that portion in the Torah, which is next week. So next week, Tuesday, reading the Parashat Haman will be very, very powerful to open uh, your vessel, the gates, to bring more income. That's correct. Yeah. For doing repairs, doing fixing, uh, where do you rank that in terms of doing the, the rectification? Okay. It's good that you asked. Tikkun HaKlali, it's 10 chapters of Tehillim that Rabbi Nachman from Breslev 200 years ago said that uh, he got a vision from heaven that when a person say those 10 chapters of Tehillim, he promised him that uh, the, one of the biggest sins that men do will be erased from him. That sin is called Zera Levatala. And a person takes his seed for nothing without a woman. Why? Because what's happening when a man does such a thing, the other powers, there's a spiritual um, lady called Lily, she takes that drop and she made ba bad angels from that. Right. This has caused a lot of problems in income, in relationships, a lot of things to the person. And most of the world are committing this sin. That's why most of the world have problems. If someone would have been clean from that sin, his life will be very, very, very smooth and good. Now, one of the fixing of this sin that Rabbi Nachman said that he got permission from heaven to reveal is saying 10 chapters of Tikkun HaKlali. That's why this is very powerful, for, especially for men. And I will recommend at least once a week to read the Tikkun HaKlali. Thank you, Rabbi. <laughs> we will do also. We will do also before the Kaddish. Yeah. Yes. So it's okay about the Tiri, to study Tiri, would it be by the learn the text or just read Tiri? Learn the Torah. Reading Tehilim is also working even if you don't understand what you read. Of course, there is a whole different effect when you read Tehillim and you understand what you're saying and you read Tehillim and you don't understand what you're saying but Tehillim that even though you don't understand what you're saying is powerful and it's working and it helps if you can do both for example read the translation one time and then read the actual Hebrew the transliteration that's the best option okay what if you just read translate uh -huh. It's also good. It's very good. Yeah, yeah, I understand. That's good. It's considered as reading Tehillim. However, if you have an, an, a chance sometimes to also read the transliteration, that will be very, very good. What about the study the text itself, like under a meaning? Again? The study the text itself. That's very good. That's called, that's called learning Tehillim. That, that's, that's called learning Tehillim. That's very powerful. And this is considered as reading Tehillim as well. There was one big rabbi, I think in Syria. Uh, yeah, I forgot his name. I think it was Rabbi Antebe or Rabbi Agassi. That he was reading Tehillim for people. People will ask him, Rabbi, read Tehillim for this sick person. That We will pay you money for the reading. So he said... If you want to pay, no problem, but don't pay me according to the pages, like how much Tehillim I read. Pay me for the hours. So they said, why? He says, because when I read Tehillim, I can sometimes read one Tehillim for half an hour. Because he learns the Tehillim, and he, deep inside the Tehillim. So he says, God doesn't, doesn't count pages, he counts minutes okay so if you go to translation or understanding that's also considered reading Tehillim that's even better sometimes yes if somebody is looking for a job but needs a little spiritual help what chapters are good to read 
so I said, if you, the chapter 4 is very good, like we said in the morning. In general, chapter 4 is very good for a job, to find a, a certain job. Also, uh, chapter 100, Mizmor Letoda, when you thank God, that's also very powerful because when you don't have a job and you say, thank you God that I don't have a job, you know, I'm okay with that as well. Thank you for what I have. This is uh, opening gates to find the job. So reading chapter 100, I think, and thanking God after that, on the situation that you have now, I think will also open the, the mazal for this, uh, for this as well. The pasuk shel kmo b'kabalat shabbat, no marim tzuzur kedavad el Hashem. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it's it's very very short uh, tailing, one hundred, kuf. Okay, so bezat Hashem, we have uh, also our soldiers in Israel right now that are giving their lives for for our nation. They do a big mitzvah, and we have to support them. So I want to say a few um, uh, psukim together with you, and also one chapter of Tehillim that will help them Bezat Hashem to be protected Amen. and to fight Hamas and Bezat Hashem to win. Amen. So Bezat Hashem, everybody say after me. I'm going to say one time, you're going to say after. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Adonai Hu Elohim Adonai Hu Elohim Adonai Hu Elohim Adonai Hu Elohim Ana Adonai Oshi Ana Ana Adonai Oshi Ana Ana Adonai Yatzlicha Ana Ana Adonai Yatzlicha Ana Shir la Malot Esayna Yelearim Me'ayn Yavo Ezri Ezri Me'im Adonai Ose Shamayn Va'aret אל יתן למות רגלך, אל ינום שומרך, הנה לא ינום ולא יישן, שומר ישראל, אדוני שומרך, אדוני צלך, על יד ימינך, יומם השמש, לא יככה, וירח בלילה, אדוני ישמורך מכל רע, ישמור את נפשך, אדוני ישמור, צאתך ובואך, מעתה ועד עולם, יהי שם אדוני מבורך מעתה ועד מי שברך אבותינו הקדושים והתורים, אברהם, יצחק ויעקב, משה, אורון, דוד ושלמה. We're making a blessing for the soldiers of Israel. הוא יברך את חיילי ארצנו, בערי אלוהינו, מגבול הלבנון ועד מדבר מצרים, עד לבוא הרבה בהבשה באוויר ובים, ייתן אדוני אלוהינו ואויבינו הקיימים ונגפים לפניהם וישמור ויציל את חיילינו מכל צרה וצוקה, כל נגע ומחלה, ישלח ברכה רווחה והצלחה בכל מעשי ידיהם, וידבר שונאינו תחתיהם, ויתרם בחטא רשועה ובעטי נצחון וכהן בהם הכתוב כי אדוני אלוהיכם ההולך עמכם לכם לכם אויביכם להושיע אתכם וכן יהי רצון ונאמר, אמן.